Hello, kids. My name is Mr. Lime. And I'm here to teach you about, well, me. I'm mostly here to teach you about the elements of design because they all start with a line. Sorry for my bad animation, kids. I don't think Mr. Morse knows what he's doing. All right, so the first thing we need to talk about are the elements of... The elements of design. I sure wish it would quit doing that over top of my voice. Anyhow, sometimes these are also called the elements... The elements of art. I wish you'd stop doing that. I know a lot of my friends are fans of the video game Minecraft, so I'm going to use that as my first example. Imagine the elements are kind of like all the building blocks that make up the entire world. The whole world is made up of tiny elements. I like that game, except for those creepers. Oh, they creep me out. Another way of thinking about the elements is, well, in science we know everything in the entire galaxy is made up of different elements, like what you see on the periodic table of elements. But each one of these elements can even make up all kinds of things on its own. Let's take one out. Let's make it carbon. Carbon is an element that's used to make all kinds of things, like flowers, and pencils, and, and kitty cats, and people. We're all carbon-based life forms. Well, of course, except for the pencil, it's not alive. Just like in real life, the elements help to make everything that we see. Well, in art, the elements are what help make the art work. Ah, you, you get it? Art, work, and... Uh, oh man, tough crowd. Mr. Morris likes to start a lot of his classes by chanting the elements of design. So let's do it together right now. Lines become shapes. Shapes become pattern. Pattern becomes texture. Texture can have color. Color has value, and value shows form. When we say all those things about becomes and has and shows or can have, let me show you what I mean. I can use a line to make a shape. And then I can take a shape, when I start adding a bunch of other shapes, it starts looking more interesting. But then I can turn those shapes into patterns, like these stripes. But I can make those patterns more interesting by filling them with texture, which is just a pattern that repeats even more and makes it look like it feels like something else. Textures can have color. I, I said they can have. Red marker, you, you're not needed yet. Ah! Ah, sorry, poor guy. Sometimes we just don't need color in an image, and that's okay. But color and all the other elements always do show value. And when we show value in a picture, it shows form or three-dimensionality. All right, so let's do a quick review. And you know what? Let, let's have Red Marker come back up here. Come on up, Red Marker. All right, sing it with me. Lines become shape. Shape becomes pattern. Pattern becomes texture, and texture can have color. Color has value, and value shows form. These are the elements of art. Actually, kids, let's just let's just remember the the, the, the term, not 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 the song. Lines can be straight, or they can be curvy, like my friend Jimmy. Jim, Jim, Jimmy, slow, slow down, Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy. Sometimes Jimmy can be extra. St stop. Sometimes lines can be short or they can be very long. Some are thick, others are thin. A line that gets thin and thick and thin and thick or sometimes light and dark, it's called variable pressure. And, well, a line that breaks apart as it's going, that's called intermittent line. Which we can't forget lines that are light and lines that are dark. But you know what's really important with the elements? Variety. Let me show you what I mean. Here's an apple made with one type of line. Now here's a second apple with variable pressure. Look at how much more dynamic that second apple is from the first. You see, Different kinds of lines can give you different kinds of pictures. And it's important to show a variety of lines. It's like with people. When we work alone, 
We can do a nice job, but when we work with other people, we can do something truly amazing. Oh man, here comes Jimmy again. Jimmy! Jimmy! Stop, Jimmy! J oh. That Bob Ross didn't have to put up with this. It all begins with a line. That line becomes a shape. A, a shape. Where, where's the E? E get, e get over here. Oh, good grief. When shapes have a name or they're in math, you call those geometric shapes. They're shapes like squares and triangles and right triangles and, and arcs and ellipses and rhomboids and diamonds and pentagons and hexagons and octagons and pigs and... Wait. Oh, wait. Wait. Pig... A pig is not a geometric shape. Let me tell you that right now. When a shape doesn't have a standard name, we call it an organic shape. Organic shapes cover just about all kinds of outlines of things you see in the world. Another type of shape... Well, it starts with my favorite game, Frisbee. I like Frisbees, but I'll tell you what. If someone was throwing a frisbee like this at me, <laughs> that sure would hurt. When a shape has rounded edges, like that frisbee, we call it soft. But when it has sharp edges, we call it a hard shape. Sometimes soft shapes have names, sometimes hard shapes have names, but they don't have to. And there's that pig again! Oink. Get him out of here! I've had about enough of all this errant livestock walking around while I'm trying to do this video. Let's hop into the line helicopter and see what's happening up from above. My goodness, I see the problem now. If I'm looking down at my poorly drawn farm, you can see I have two animal pens. One's full of cows and the other one's full of pigs. Do you see something wrong with one of those two pens? That's right. The one that's on the left has a hole in the fence. Let's get those pigs back in there. Oink. All right. Now that that's closed up, let me tell you about closed shapes. Oink. When a shape's closed all the way around, it's a closed shape. But if you have a gap in it, it's called an open shape. Sometimes when we're learning to write letters, like the letter O, we don't complete the circle all the way. That would be an example of an open shape. The last type of shape isn't really a type. It's more a giant mutant combination of shapes. See, I could have a crazy shape like this, and you see it's got organic parts, and it's got parts that look geometric, and it's got hard parts, and it's got soft parts, and it's got an open part. Just a combination of all the types of shapes. And Jimmy! J J Jimmy! I, I told you to stop that, Jimmy! Oh, he's so extra today.